Hi scrubs, I hope you're well. So in this video today, I'm going to be talking about breeding rare coat colors on a horse. Now, I did cover this topic in a video a couple of years ago, but I want to expand on it a little bit. And uh, also, just to make it clear that this video is really more designed for people who are looking to breed uh, coat colors, specifically for trophies, as cheaply and as efficiently as possible. But there is a technique in this video which will be useful to those people who are looking to breed purebreds, because I use a crossbred uh, technique for the trophies. So. Um, the first thing I want to explain, because this is important, is if you go into the community and the directories, you've got um, in the horses tab all the different breeds that are on your server. And if you click on any of these, now we're just going to go with the Dartmoor for this, okay? When you click on any particular breed, you have what are allowed coats for the Dartmoor or whatever breed you're looking at. And then there's these percentages, okay? These percentages are very important because on horse, unlike some other horse games out there, horse does not have color genetics. Horse has percentages. And basically what that means is for every hundred times that I will breed Dartmoor ponies, 15% of the time I could get a chestnut. 1% of the time I could get a mouse gray. 5% of the time I could get a flaxen chestnut, for example. And it does not matter, if I was to breed two chestnut Dartmoors together, it does not necessarily mean that I'm going to get a chestnut Dartmoor. If I breed two mouse grey Dartmoors together, it does not mean I'm going to get a mouse grey Dartmoor. That's something you need to understand about horse. It does not increase your chances because it's totally randomized to those specific percentages. Now, if you're trying to breed rare coat colors and you need purebreds and that's what you want, there's two techniques you're going to have to do. The first one being you're just going to have to breed purebred ones over and over again, whether you use a mare that you buy out of the sales or that you have yourself, and then breed it to public uh, coverings of purebred stallions of that breed over and over again, or just breed ones that you already have together and just keep repeating that. Now, the other thing that you can do, and this is the second thing, if you're trying to get purebreds and you just want to get the full right off the bat is to use a hair pack. Now, I've got a Carmelo Shinkatig pony here and I have sent a covering to this mare. So if I go to this mare right now, the covering is here. Now, I am breeding two Shinkatig purebred horses together, okay? And we know they're purebred because they've got this little blue star. If they're not, they don't have that blue star, they're not purebred. And okay, they're both exactly the same color. And if we have a look at the Shinkatig statistics, this is a 2% rare coat, which is quite a rare coat. This does not matter because it does not have any effect on what the foal is going to be. So the color of the parents has no effect. Now there are some breeds that only have one color of coat and in that case like the Frisians for example and I'm just going to quickly show you those. So if we go to the directories here and I'll quickly show you the Frisian horses. Frisians only come in one color so it's always going to be that color. But for the likes of our shin fatigues we don't have that luxury. So we're going to cover them this time without the hair pack and I'm just going to age them forward so you can see uh, what foal we get. If you want you can use the ultrasound to see what color the foal is and in this case we've got a filly of Shinkatig pony breed and a Palomino Tobiano coat color. So if we have a look here the Palomino Tobiano is a 2% coat so we've actually been quite lucky and got a rare coat. So we're just going to age her forward and we're going to go to the vet and we've got our coat color. So here is our new Shinkatig that we've got, which is a reasonably rare coat color that we got. And that was just literally the luck of the draw, really, because the parents have no effect. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use the hair pack. And I'm going to show you why the hair pack is really good if you're looking purebreds. Okay, so our mare is ready to cover again. And we're going to click on OK. Now, this time, what we're going to do is we're going to use the hair pack. So we're going to click Use. We're going to use that. And what is so great about the Harris pack? I'm going to show you in just a moment. So we're going to add that to our mare and you can now see now it's this item here within the Harris pack called the Harris Lily. So this is the Harris Lily and this is only available within a Harris pack. There's no other way to get it. And the next time your mare gives birth, you can pick the foal's coat color among those available for the breed. So basically we couldn't pick some other breed's coat color. We can only pick the ones that are available within that breed. I mean, obviously it's important to remember that the Harris pack is quite an expensive item. It's three passes, although it does have the benefit of having the fertility wand. So if you decide that you must have purebred or you decide that you're going to do a crossbred 
a coat collar one instead. You could use the Harris pack because you do have the fertility wand within it, which means you're going to get two folds. So you could keep one and sell the other because sometimes it is cheaper to breed them than it is to go and buy the horse that you need out of the sales because some of the rare coat colors can be a couple of passes. It depends on what server you're on. Some are actually quite cheap and some can be very expensive. So sometimes it's worth using a Harris pack, but personally I wouldn't spend passes on it. I'd wait till you have maybe one in a promotion or something like that if there's a coat that you're really struggling to get. And typically I only use a Harris pack for a coat that I have been trying to get for a really long time and haven't got. Any other ones I just kind of work on gradually. So this is why the hair pack is so useful because you've got the fertility wand, you can have twin ones, and you're gonna get the Harris Lily to choose the color that you want. So whenever you birth the mare, having used the hair pack, you will get this interface. You will be able to name both the foals. So I've named the first one Twin 1 and the second one Twin 2. And here we've got all of the colors available for this Shin Katig breed. So we could choose Cromella like the parents. We could go with Fleet and Grey. We could pick Dunn. Whatever particular coat that we're missing, we can click and select and then just click continue. Now both foals will be the same color because you can't choose two separate colors. So this is why the hair pack is quite useful because the hair as Lily allows you to choose the color. You're using the fertility one, you're getting two folds. So we could keep that one for our trophy and we could sell the second one in the direct sales uh, depending on how valuable it is. If you're just trying to collect the coat color for your trophy collection, it's fine to actually use a crossbred to do that. So I'm gonna show you a technique now that you can use. And this I think is personally one of the cheapest ways to do it and probably the most efficient. It might take a little bit longer, but I think it works out better in value. So all we need to start off with is a purebred mare. So we're gonna click the purebred here. We're also gonna click for female and we're gonna look for one that isn't currently in full. And I'm just gonna pick a Morpheus Arms now, right now. This part isn't important for you guys. I'm just doing it to demo this a little bit faster. So we're gonna pick this mare here. So when you go down to genetics, you can see here that this mare is 100% Connemara. And this is going to be quite important for us because on horse, whenever you breed a stallion to a mare and they're both purebred, whatever the breed of the stallion is dictates what the foal will be. So if we had a Connemara mare and we bred it to a 100% purebred Frisian stallion, the foal will be Frisian. If we took an Alcatigi stallion and bred it to this Connemara, who's 100% to, you know, a purebred Alcatigi stallion, it would be an Alcatigi foal every single time. So you just want to have a bunch of mares in your farm, maybe, that you're not using that are purebred and put them in foal to the breed that you need, whether you go into the public coverings and use some public covers or whether you have maybe one stallion of the breed that you're trying to get coat colors of and you could breed um, that way. There's a couple of different methods in that respect. So our mare is ready. We're now going to click cover my mare. And if we go into public covers, it's very important that when you're doing this, that you click on purebred to display the covers that are available. So I'm going to click choose. We're going to use that stallion. It is actually our stallion because we're on the test server right now. So both of them are purebred. Now this is going to dictate what the foal is. So let's cover the mare. And this time we're not going to use the hair pack or anything like that. We're just going to go uh, straight to this. Our mare is going to give birth tomorrow and I, I don't usually click ultrasound, but I'm just doing it for this video. Um, so click ultrasound. So one colt of Shin Katik pony breed and of black Overo coat color. So we're just going to quickly age her. I'm going to go get the vet and we've got our new foal. And if we have a little look here, so we've got a black Overo and that is a 2% colt. So we've been quite lucky um, in that respect. Now, as I said, you could breed 60 times and keep getting the most common coat but typically you'll get a little bit more variety than that um, but these are some of the techniques you can use you know you need to just be aware that whenever you're covering it's easier to stick with purebred horses because i got asked in the original video why couldn't you just breed crossbred with crossbred and the reason for this is right you see if we just go back to that fold that we just bred Okay, this foal is half Shin Katig pony and half Connemara, but the reason it shows up as a Shin Katig, as I said, is because its father was a 100% Shin Katig and the mother was 100% Connemara. So here I found a crossbred. Now it shows up as Appaloosa, and if we click on genetics, we can see that it's 62% Appaloosa, 25% Alkatigi, and 12% Thoroughbred. Now, if you were to try and use this horse to breed yourself a particular breed, 
you've got a lot more breeds in the mix. It's going to be a little bit harder unless you mathematically know exactly how it's going to finish out to actually plan what you're looking to breed for a trophy coat if you're looking at a specific breed. This is why I think it's better to work with a purebred because when you breed purebred to purebred, even if they're two different breeds, you know what it's going to be. You know what the crossbred foal is going to turn out as. Whereas whenever you're breeding crossbred to crossbred, there's a lot more going on there and it's harder to control. Now it's always important to remember to go into your trophies and actually check to see how much the coats are selling for themselves because sometimes they're really cheap and it's just better to buy them like for this one for example with the black new forest for me it's cheaper for me to just buy it than it is for me to probably sit there and try and get the particular color that i need so in this respect now it will take a little minute for that to validate but in some cases it's cheaper to just go in and buy it now we'll have a look at one of the other ones here Okay, so these are a little bit more expensive in this respect, but there's still some available and they're a little bit more expensive than the last one, but we can still buy them, so we'll buy that. And sometimes you'll be very lucky and be able to get purebreds of the color that you need because, you know, sometimes people who breed these particular colors have a lot of them. You know, for example, I'm not going to run out of Carmelo Connemaras, even though it's a rare coat color because I breed so many Connemaras. But it's much more difficult, obviously, when you don't breed that particular color or those particular breeds. Now we're just going to check here, liver chestnut as well. Okay, so that's more expensive. I might decide in that respect to just cover a couple of my mares with a new forest stallion. But uh, these are just some of the things to sort of bear in mind when breeding rare coat colors. You know, if you don't want to spend too much. Just take your own mares, your own purebred mares, cover them with a purebred stallion of the breed that you need in the trophy colours and slowly age them up gradually until the foal and keep repeating. Sell off the ones that you don't need in the sales and eventually you'll get there. Um, you know, you can use public coverings if you don't have the stallion that you need. You know, try and keep your reserve low as well if you're using that method because then your foal, uh, your, your vet fee is less. Anyway, Scrubs, I'm going to leave it there. I hope you had a lovely day. Bye-bye. Oh,